All right, good evening, everyone. I'll call the Monday, May 18th, uh, 2020 Board of Commissioners meeting into order. Um, we don't have anyone signed up to deliver our invocation this evening. Would any commissioners this evening like to deliver an invocation? No? Just take a moment of silence. You seem to be the man of the hour for some reason. My lucky day. Birthday boy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this glorious day. Lord, I pray that you would protect uh, our county as our visitors come and spend their time with us. Lord, thank you for a place that people want to be. Lord, and how blessed we are that we get to live here year-round. Father, I pray protection over our residents and over our guests. Lord, and I ask that it would be a blessed time for everyone above. Lord, bless this meeting, and uh, Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom as we discuss the issues tonight. And Lord, I pray that uh, safe return for each and every one of us. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Paul. All right, and uh, we do need to uh, amend the agenda this evening to uh, add closed session, and I'll do that uh, after the consent agenda. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, let's save this public comment. Let's see here. We got a late email for public comment. Otherwise, we did not have any. I'll take a moment to read this. It was sent in uh, with no name. Um, commissioners, coming from a frequent visitor to the Outer Banks, to say I am sadly disappointed with the rescheduling and refunding options provided by our rental property would be an understatement. We have visited many times throughout the years and have always enjoyed our trips. This year, we had a planned house for 28 members to come into town from across the country. As we continue to see not new updates regarding coronavirus, we know we couldn't continue to put off making a decision. We began contacting our rental office to see what our different options were. The response was eye-opening. We were told we couldn't get a refund unless there was a stay-at-home order in place. While we continue to be told that we cannot have gatherings for more than 10 people, a house with 28 residents is fine, question mark. Absolutely absurd. Of course, they, they were more than welcome to welcome to push our reservation later in the summer when they could charge us three times the original rental price. It is appalling to know that rather than refunding vacationers, they offered to waive the change of week fee but still expect you to pay the difference for the new week. And needless to say, I will not be planning a vacation on the Outer Banks in the near future. Um, I think one of the things that's raised in this, first of all, that's a rental company thing. It has nothing to do with the Board of Commissioners as to how they, they want to do their business. But also, um, uh, I believe part of the governor's stay-at-home, um, once we went into phase one and I'll, or hopefully phase two soon, um, party, 10 or more were allowed to gather if, if it was a, um, a family, basically. Um, is, that, is that about right, Ike? That, that's, that's correct. There was an exception made for persons in a residence. Right. So to that point, it's, uh, like I said, people are focusing on the TIM, but that's not necessarily the same as, as doing a public gathering rather than a residential gathering. And um, So you can come with your family. If whoever sent this is actually listening, you can, in fact, come with your family and enjoy your time here on the Outer Banks. Um, didn't have any others come in, so that's the end of public comment. Um, I'll move on to commissioner's report. Uh, I'll start out this this uh, this past weekend. We saw uh, it was quite busy up here. Commissioner McCord and us. We were just talking about that. The um, four drive beaches were tend to be very full. It was the first Saturday anybody could come out. And it was 85 degrees. It's a recipe for people showing up and having a good time. Um, um, Commissioner McCord can probably talk a little bit more about it, but. Um, uh, Matt Bikert, the sheriff, had stepped up the deputies this weekend, not to full capacity, but uh, added some more. And some of the guys from the street came up uh, that were down in the paved areas to assist as well. So while it may seem like there weren't enough deputies up there, or there weren't any up there, they were, in fact, out there. I saw them out there this weekend um, working hard. It seemed to be everyone was pretty much behaving themselves out there from what I saw this weekend. So uh, 
all in all, not a bad weekend. Um, I don't think I have much else to say this evening. Mr. Payment, anything for you this evening? Uh, just a quick little um, this weekend. I noted um, the same kind of type of activities. I know the farmer's markets, I stopped into one of them. They were very happy to see the tourists come in, and uh, they were booming. They were taking the precautions. They had their face masks on. They were doing their due diligence. But uh, they were happy for the business and the workers there that they could keep them. And um, you know, so I get up and down the county, you know, traffic was flowing like it did last summer. So, um, you know, I think it's a good sign for local economies. I think it's a start. Um, but just remember to stay safe out there. And um, looking forward to a good, fun summer for everybody. Um, again, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Kitty? Thank you. We're getting near the end of Operation Love Thy Neighbor. Uh, I'd like to thank the people who have contributed to this cause. And if you haven't, I'll ask that you get out and try to give a donation if you are able to. The program is to support our neighbors here in the county who've been affected by the corona pandemic. And we have information on our website, county website, as to where you can make a donation. And we will have the information on the distribution sites that we'll have. We're giving gift cards out to people to Food Line. And we'll have that information coming out soon. And I, too, would like to welcome all the visitors back to Curry Tuck. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Belmont. Um, so one of the challenges facing a beach uh, community has to do with the ability to, as best we can, make it a safe environment for, for people to uh, recreate. Um, I had a lengthy conversation with Michael Cherry um, and some of the challenges that he faced. Uh, Michael uh, is head or has the contract to provide lifeguards uh, f for our beaches. And um, Michael basically was telling me that they invented, created basically an online qualification course that could handle all of the book, all of the school, all of the presentation subjects that lifeguards go through every year. And uh, he went as far as to say that it's the, it may be the only one out there. Um, that's still followed up with, I want to say, two solid days at least of you still got to be the, you know, do the physical tasks with life saving. But he assured me that we have, that he has probably the best life-saving crew, partly due to the pandemic, because there were all these people that their jobs got shut down and they were sent home. But he actually said that he has a waiting list of 50 lifeguards, and he has never had a waiting list that significant. So um, for folks that are concerned, we're going to have some of the best lifeguard support that uh, the county has ever had. And again, to echo what's been said earlier, uh, welcome to those that are uh, visiting Curta County, and uh, please be safe out there. Um, you know, opening week is probably going to be red flagged, and uh, you know, rip currents and all that kind of stuff. So everybody, be safe. Lifeguards take the stand on Friday or Saturday. 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 So uh, everybody, be safe. That's it. Thank you, Mr. McCord. Um, First off, I want to say um, uh, e this week is National uh, EMS uh, EMS Week, um, recognized in the United States. Um, Curry Dick County is very, very fortunate, and I work with a lot of those uh, EMS personnel. We have some phenomenal people that do uh, witness life saves, all kinds of stuff, um, that they do a phenomenal job. So kudos to them. Last week was National Police Week, Fallen Officer. Um, same across the uh, United States um, currently, and I just wanted to mention, you know, we only have one um, line of duty death in Currituck County in the history. It's a good thing we don't want to. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say that was um, that happened in uh, October of 1963. Watt uh, Franklin Morgan, um, he still has family in the county, so um, you know, kudos to his family. Like I said, and um, thank for his service. Um, Get your beach passes from tourism. I'm sure the county manager is going to touch on that. Uh, the deputies will be out working the beach. I'm working the beach on Sunday. So, um, like I said, make sure you have that. Uh, make sure everybody practices the social distancing, my least two favorite words, but, you know, make sure you do the social distancing. Um, the beach was busy this weekend. Like Commissioner White said or Chairman White said, 
we did have extra deputies. Um, they staffed. We were one shy of what complete full staff would have been. Um, the guys were slammed. It was busy. I worked the weekend on the mainland. We were busy. Um, you know, I think everybody had just been tired of being in their house, to be honest. And it was it was all kinds of calls. So, but like I said, hopefully everybody um, be smart, be safe. Um, you know, if you have some health issues, you know, don't go out. You don't have to. Um, excited for phase two to start, I guess, Friday on um, the governor's order. I am so ready to eat at a restaurant, you know, so I'm sure a lot of us are, and I need a haircut too, so. All right, but that's it for me. Um, like I said, thanks to our EMS and our law enforcement and the, tele every, and, and the county staff. Everybody's done a great job during this time. The county managers worked numerous, uh, Mary Beth, uh, emergency management. Um, you know, we're very, very lucky that we have the staff that we have and the, the citizens of the county and everything so that's it Mr. Ethers I'll just ditto what everybody else has said and just keep in mind folks use some common sense it does look like our first weekend was fairly successful with a few glitches but that was to be expected just stay safe keep your family safe and take personal responsibility for yourself and your family thank you thank you Commissioner Jarvis Thank you. Um, the Trillium Northern Region Advisory Board met um, on March 12th virtually, and uh, we were given a, an update on their response to the pandemic. Uh, they've um, taken a couple of serious measures to make sure that the people of Northeast North Carolina are being served, including telemedicine. Almost everybody is working from home. Uh, they've created um, and disseminated electronic and paper uh, brochures on COVID-19 to the partners, um, uh, such as the local health departments and the EMS uh, departments. Uh, they've also waived a lot of pre-authorizations for most services. Uh, and Director Bland uh, Baker said he is very proud of the response. They have noted an uptick um, in the mobile crisis response and the calls uh, over the last few weeks, probably as we've pointed out, because so many people are hold up and tired of being in the same place all the time. Um, and then I'll just also touch uh, what uh, Commissioner uh, Kitty Etheridge said about love thy neighbor. Please give if you can. This will help those families in Currituck County that have food insecurity during this uncertain time. And finally, uh, as Commissioner McCord said, uh, I want to say thank you for the EMS and police, uh, the Sheriff's Department and all law enforcement in the county. Uh, that has, during this pandemic, uh, kept us safe, uh, kept us feeling uh, secure, and we are so happy to have them because it keeps us safe in our daily lives. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up uh, this evening is the county manager's report. Mr. Steichleiter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was going to take just a little bit of time and touch on the operational updates that are going to be coming to Currituck County to the staff in response to Phase 2, which is supposed to be on Friday. If for some reason it's delayed, these operational changes would be delayed as well. Right now, all of the uh, models and trends point towards us being on track for the uh, Phase 2 opening. So these operational changes I'm going to talk about are would actually go into effect on the Tuesday after Memorial Day, um, assuming that we roll into Phase 2. At that point, any county staff that is currently teleworking but is not a high-risk employee, so in other words, they don't have any of the things that would be um, that could potentially put them at risk with extra complications from COVID, will be returning to work on Tuesday. It's going to be a big change for some of us um, who've been here because it's it's been really, I'll say, lonely, but I guess quiet's the positive way to say it. Um, so we'll start seeing some folks come back in across all county offices. We would expect that the um, the other employees who are high risk would probably return to work whenever we enter phase three. We would expect that um, as we move into to phase two, we're going to make a change to the way we do permitting. Right now it's currently all online permitting. What we will do at phase two is transition to Tuesday and Thursday. You can come and drop your documents off. You still won't be able to stay until you get a permit. So we're, instead of doing express permitting on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we will be doing drop offs. So if somebody just doesn't want to do the online process, they, they can come by on Tuesdays and Thursdays, drop their plans off. Turnaround time is somewhere between three and five days to get a permit. 
Um, actually, sometimes the online permitting actually goes quicker because we can get documents back and forth a little faster. Um, we've really had a lot of success with the online permitting. Uh, the express permitting will not be occurring at this time, and there's a potential that as we move into next budget year, um, if the economy rebounds and we can add positions, maybe express permitting can come back, but I don't know that we've got the staff availability to be able to handle express permitting without adding positions, and as we all touched on at our budget meetings um, this past week, we're not adding any new staff until we see how our sales tax revenue comes in from the, uh, from the summer. We have canceled our baseball softball season with Parks and Recreation. That was due to two factors. One was just the amount of time that we would have to get a season in. It was just going to really compress it. And two, we didn't have great registration, probably because of the fact that folks are kind of concerned. As far as tournaments go, once we go into phase two, so that would be the weekends after Memorial Day, there are guidelines in place that would allow tournaments to take place with restrictions to how many kids can be in a dugout, the family socially distancing at the field. Um, you put more time in between games so that you can sanitize the dugouts. So all of that would occur. So if we have tournaments that are booked at our athletic facility, those would start up the weekend after Memorial Day weekend, assuming we roll into phase two. We would expect that other sports seasons that come after softball and baseball should roll out as usual, unless, of course, there's a, a resurgence in virus and the governor, you know, puts other things in place and and we go back to kind of phase one, essentially. The, um, the libraries will be offering curbside book checkout starting in phase two. We're trying to source some more cleaning agents. Uh, just the issue with the library is when somebody goes in the library, if they actually go in and they start browsing books, it's a lot of stuff you have to sanitize. So there's some concern about having enough supplies. Once we get into phase three, then the libraries would open for regular use. I would anticipate the senior centers would open for regular business on phase three. The only reason we would wait that long is that obviously is a, um, a high risk population, and so we just don't want to don't want to take any chances there. Um, as we head into, as we talked about at the budget meetings, um, the the public restrooms at the beach accesses, Corova Park, and the uh, the um, public restroom on the outside of the Wellhead Club will be open. Wellhead Club, once we go into phase three, would be available for tours. Um, and other than that, I've just any other questions about operational? Um, move forward, it, um, Mr. Manager. If you could, could you the the beach passes? I know they can get them from the well. Could you touch on that a little bit? Sure. So we're doing something a little different um, with beach passes. We we've um, we're going to have kind of curbside. So if you if let me back up, if you are a property owner in Currituck County, anywhere other than the four wheel drive area, you get two passes. For free. If you are a property owner in the four wheel drive area, but you do not have a home on that property, you get two passes for free. If you own property in the four wheel drive area, but have a home as well on that property, you get four passes for free. To pick those up, you simply go to um, either one of the welcome centers. They'll be able to come out and assist you curbside. Um, it's just a matter of proving your identification improving uh, the tax record. So basically they're just going to pull you up on GIS, make sure that you own the property you say you own. Or if you're, um, if you, if you rent, then something proven, you know, your rental and, and we'll go from there. The uh, folks who have to buy passes, they can actually do that online. Um, we've set up a PayPal link so you can pay for those online with a credit card. What would happen is you will pay for that. You will bring your receipt to one of those welcome centers. You'll give the proof of payment, and then they'll bring it out. With all of these, we're providing um, documentation that explains the rules and regulations. In the past, we've required folks to either watch a video or kind of even take like a quick online quiz. We've done away with that this year because we can't expect folks, we're not going to let folks come into the welcome centers in order to take that as long as we're in phase two. And so we don't want to, um, we're not going to put that requirement in place. We're still going to educate and hand those rules out. And so folks are still going to get the information Hopefully next year as we get back into more of a normal season, then we'll be able to ramp up our education. We really last year I think had hit kind of a stride with that, with the ability to um, to do videos and that kind of thing. Is there a video from last year? Because uh, to my knowledge, when we had the uh, all the the rules and everything are still the same. There is some type of video. I remember Sergeant Davenport from the Sheriff's Department did a video. There is a video. It's a really it's a video not just on um it's on video on how to air up, how to air down. I think there's a picture of what happens if you don't properly deflate your tires and the consequences of that action. 
Um, and that video is still available. Um, we'll have that on our tourism website and also on our YouTube channel. But we just won't be asking people to watch it just so we can limit and provide more social distancing with folks as they come through. Um, the other change this year with beach parking passes, we are allowing the rental companies to essentially purchase passes from the county and then distribute those to renters. So what will happen, and I'm, I'm, if a rental company, say they come in at the first of the season, they buy 100 passes. At the end of the season, they've, they've given out um, or sold at the same value 90 of those passes. They have 10 passes left. They bring those 10 passes back to the county and will refund the money for those 10 passes. So that, hopefully that will cut down on the number of folks who have to actually go to the Welcome Center. The rental management companies then can just include these passes with the check-in package that they provide. So, um, and so, yeah, so, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> you had, the only thing they can sell it for is the face value on those passes. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that was just, a, we were already working on that prior to COVID, just trying to find a way to, to make that a little bit easier for folks. Um, once we get into phase three, we would anticipate the Welcome Center being fully open as well. Uh, right now, it's just kind of, like I said, the curbside service if folks need it. Um, obviously, our air down, air up stations are still open and, and available. So You had mentioned that the restrooms would be open on the beach. Uh, are we going to be cleaning them a little bit more often? Are you going to have signage about um, how many people can be in the restroom at one time? So we should feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, so, so we'll, um, we'll have some signage that will go up hopefully one day this week um, addressing that. Most of our restrooms, you wouldn't violate any mass gathering regulation, um, but we'll talk about the cleaning. We are going to try to do more frequent cleanings. We can only do that so often. Um, you know, we'd encourage people to just kind of use common sense when you go into a public facility. You know, the key is wash your hands. I mean, you know, hopefully everybody's doing that anyway if they're in our public restroom facilities. But, um, nope. you know, what we'd encourage folks to do, though, is on a serious note, wash your hands when you go in and then wash your hands when you go out, which I know is kind of a change for folks. But, um other than that, we'll, we'll be cleaning them uh, a little more frequently, but, you know, we do have a, a limited staff. That is something we could look at, um, at doing with some, some of our, um, in our tourism staff. If they've got 50 folks who want to be lifeguards who can't get a job, maybe we can find a couple more uh, folks who, who want to work part-time in Corolla cleaning restrooms this summer. So, um, Other than that, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, which uh, since it's uh, Commissioner McCord brought up EMS week, um, I wanted to kind of just give a, some kudos to some of our folks who are firefighters, but in our system they are firefighters slash paramedics, so they provide um, full medical service as well as firefighting capabilities. Uh, we had a re an email from somebody who was very appreciative about the quality of service and the um, empathy and the care that they were shown by specifically Lieutenant Russo, um, Firefighter Watson, Childress, and Knowles. So I wanted to just take a second and let them know that we really appreciate what they do. Um, and Commissioner McCord was right. Um, I've been around a lot of EMS staffs in my career, and Currituck County has a top-notch staff both in capability and customer service, which is uh, really exceptional, especially for a rural county. Um, we, we, we do as good a job as anybody around, I think, better than even a lot of urban areas as far as our save rates and that kind of thing. Um, other than that, I don't uh, have any other major updates other than just to let the public know we had budget meetings last week. Those were uh, live streamed. I believe one of them is available to watch now. The other one, if it's not available right now, will be available later this week. The budget will be, um, we will get you all the budget officially in a, in a public meeting on the first meeting in June with a public hearing to follow and um, maybe ratification of the budget at the second meeting in June. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, um, next item on the agenda is public hearings. Item A, PB 19-17, Baxter Station. Uh, due to the current restrictions, we will not be able to hear that tonight. I'm going to uh, move that we move that to be heard, uh, hopefully, at our first meeting in June, which will be the first. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, next item on the agenda is new business. Item A, board appointments, uh, joint nursing uh, domicile advisory board. Who's up for that? I think about that. Mr. Mr. Just... Chairman, uh, and I'm going to look the clerk. This is the CA. Is this the CAC? Is that correct? Yeah, there's uh, two, two people who were recommended. Lisa. Um, Renia, Renia Murray. Renia Murray and um, Marcy. 
Um, and if I could take just one second, there's one item I wanted to kind of just mention to the board so that you all understand the process. This is a, a board that meets under the um, Albemarle Commission. It's basically an advisory board that exists under them. It works a little different, so I just want you all to be aware. Essentially, the way that it, now that it works, they give us names and you all appoint the names they give us. So it's not like our normal boards where we go out, solicit names, we get those, then you all have an opportunity to kind of mull those over and choose the best name. It's specifically given to you all. I just want you all to know that because it's it's different. And I don't know if it's always been that way. My understanding is that's changed in the last year or two. Um, from a staff perspective, that's a little odd that you all are expected to appoint folks who um, don't go through our normal process, but just wanted to make you aware of that um, as you get ready to make those appointments. Okay. Well, who would like to move to approve these? I'll move to approve the two recommendations. Thank you. So, any seconds? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item is consent agenda. Any questions about the con consent agenda? Make a motion to approve. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, at this time, I'll recess the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners and uh, move to go into closed session pursuant to GS 143-318.11A3 to consult with the county attorney and to preserve attorney-client privilege in the matter entitled Ayers v. Kirtuck County Department of Social Services.